Hi everyone, Jackie here with Enjoying Life's Journey. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back to another monthly budget with me. We're planning out our cash flow plan, our spending plan, our zero base budget for July 2019. Happy New Year. So the reason I'm saying Happy New Year is uh, my birthday is July 9th. So I'll be 37 on July 9th. I like to think of July is the beginning of my year. Also, a lot of the academic calendars and planners and all that stuff come out right about now because school is going to be back in session. So I have made some changes to my budget template to kind of make things a little bit easier for me. We had a lot going on in June, so we have to make some adjustments as well. Let's jump on the Excel sheet and see what I've changed. If you're not familiar with my channel or with these videos, I make budget videos. Uh, and I like to share with you guys real numbers, real life situations, so that way you can get an idea of uh, how to manage your money, how to cash flow your money, and learn from our wins, learn from our mistakes. I originally made this template following another YouTuber's tutorial. Um, Jackie, her channel was Gazelle Intense. Now I believe it's Stay at Home Dad or something like that. Uh, but I followed her tutorial to make my base, which you, which originally was just the budget amount which is my monthly budget and the actual amount since then I've added different things throughout the year so I actually have every single Friday up here because my husband gets paid on Fridays so we do a unique budget for every single week as well or a cash flow plan a spending plan for that week um, in relation to what our goals for the month were also what I've added was on the side here are all of my checking and savings accounts so that way I can balance our accounts um, all in one place. I can kind of see, you know, what is the 401k balance at? What are the savings accounts balance at? Um, you know, I can manage everything on one template. What I've made different from what you've seen from previous months, most recently, I literally just did the did this this morning, was I've changed up where some of my things are at, and I've changed up some percents, and I've put in a few auto formulations, calculations that are going to help me kind of calculate some of this stuff uh, automatically so I don't have to keep calculating it every single time. If you followed, I've done my self-employment, so I am self-employed uh, for those of you who may not know, so I make money a few other ways. I share the income expense report for that on this channel as well. And on there, I follow percentages for different things. So as soon as I get paid, the money gets divided up into different accounts based on the percent. Whatever is in there is basically what's in that account, and that's the amount of money that I have for like spending on um, my pay and on taxes and on uh, the necessities and stuff like that. If you've been following, I've tried to, I say that I want to divide up our money into certain percentages, but we haven't really been following it. So what I've done is I've made some calculations so I can actually start doing. The first thing, what I've changed over here is I have just pay yourself first, okay? so. Previously, I had pay yourself first and taxes. I am still keeping track of how much we're paying in taxes, but I've moved it down here into the necessities because it's the law. We have to pay taxes as part of a necessity. It's not paying us. It's not giving, and it's definitely not fun. Uh, so it's part of the necessities um, percentage is what I'm doing. So paying ourselves first. Now, you have to kind of decide on your own how much what percent do you want to pay yourself first? And you have to kind of like commit to paying yourself that. T. Harv Egger, I got most of my percents from him. He says your freedom amount, so paying for your, your paying yourself first, your freedom, your financial freedom, your retirement, your investing, those type of things. Uh, he says 10% of your income. David Bach, who wrote The Automatic Millionaire, suggests 12.5%. And that actually equates out to one hour of your pay like so if you went to work for eight hours that very first hour um, you're paying yourself first before you pay taxes before you do anything and he said that equals about twelve and a half percent and then Dave Ramsey says you should be investing in your financial future fifteen percent so our goal is ultimately to be doing fifteen percent right now our freedom fund is my husband's 401k Okay, then from there, T. Harv Eggert says that you should be saving about 10% of your income for your long-term savings. So your emergency fund, saving for a car, saving for um, you know down payment for a house, saving for a bigger vacation, whatever might be a bigger thing. David Bach mentions that you should have a dream account and that you need to come up with whatever percent that that might be. So for me personally, 
my pay myself first number is actually going to be 25%. Our goal is 25% of our income to be paying ourselves first. 15% of that going towards financial freedom and then 10% going towards our long-term financial savings goals. Uh, so now one big change that we have here is in June we actually ended up financing we financed Ricky a truck so he it took a lot of convincing from him to me I can't I don't know how to say it right now uh, to, to have me to have me say okay we can do it so I crunched the numbers and I wanted to make sure that it would still stay within our percents um, and that's okay so now if you notice we're only paying ourselves 12 and a half percent so that's half of our goal of 25%. Now, if you are following Dave Ramsey's baby steps, he would say if you have debt other than your mortgage, that you would just have $1,000 in your savings account and then you would tackle everything, all of your debt. So you would not invest, you would not save, you would not save anymore, you would tackle anything extra, you would cut your costs to the bare minimum and throw everything at your debt. We have done that in the past. We have been we were debt free for about three years and that's what we did in the past and the reason we did that was because we had to we did not have any we didn't even have enough cash flow to pay our rent to pay our regular bills so we had to get out of debt just to even survive since then my husband has changed career paths he's making quite a bit more he's working a lot of overtime uh, I'm self-employed now so I'm not only home with the girls I you know I'm working uh, on the side as well so now we're going to be following the percents based on our overall budget based off of T. Harv Eggert with a few tweaks and we're gonna follow David Bach's recommendation he says take your pay yourself first number and cut it in half continue to pay yourself first half and then put that other half as extra towards your debt he also gives some great um, things in his book, The Automatic Millionaire, on how to um, calculate, you know, which debt to tackle first. Dave Ramsey says tackle the smallest balance first. Um, some other people say tackle the maybe the largest percent first. Uh, within David Box, he has you do a little calculation based on your minimum payment and how many payments you have and, and all of that. So when I looked at all three of those, well, the truck is basically our only debt but that would be our lowest and that would that would come first out of anything so for those of who have been following we were paying extra on the mortgage we were paying extra on the principal mortgage the principal of the mortgage we're gonna hold off at least for the end of the year we're gonna hold off on that we're gonna put some extra towards the truck first so you know that's kind of what's changing up here so up here our pay ourselves first we have eight percent of Ricky's um, regular work and it's overtime right up here eight percent is before taxes like I mentioned our goal was 15 percent by the end of the year we are gonna pause that we're gonna leave it at eight percent that is a good amount we're investing about 350 a month maybe a little bit more uh, and within David box automatic millionaire the book he also gives some examples if you know you invested X amount every single month for you know say 30 years you would retire with X amount and so Ricky and I found out that we would need to invest minimum $300 a month to reach our financial security or financial our financial freedom number um, so we feel really good leaving at 8% because we're still on track to reach our number uh, within 30 years so again we're, we're 37 so that would mean we're 67 in 30 years so we're gonna leave it at 8% and so the other to make up for the 1250 is going to go into the emergency fund. So if you guys watched uh, the plan for June, our air conditioner went out, so we did have to pay. We had to take a big chunk out of the emergency fund to pay uh, for the installation of air conditioner. We did use some of that money to put down a down payment on Ricky's truck. Uh, so I will be doing um, the budget report and all that with you guys as well. Uh, and then you know we had my friend Heather. We'd already planned and we had money put aside specifically for her to do the cement in the backyard. So we have our the cement for the patio and a cement for a sitting area. So we got all of that done in June. So we had a lot going on in June. Plus no school is in session. So we've gone to the lake twice. I've taken the girls to the water parks. So we had a lot going on in June. Uh, and Ricky's motorcycle, he fixed it, and the same problem came back. So we finally said, you know what, he needs a reliable truck. So we went and got him a truck. Uh, T.R. Eggert says do 10% for personal growth, education, all of that. My, my self-employment budget is now covering my 
um, self-improvement. So that's not coming out of this budget anymore. Ricky, you know, Ricky, we were put, giving him money for tools and stuff. That has just, that's going to be part of just the necessities bucket now. So paying ourselves first is now 12.5%. The goal is 25%. Uh, giving, some people do 10% um, or doing 5%. So I'm going to have this calculate automatically for me. Uh, gifts, this is basically holidays, birthdays, tipping money, uh, any type of uh, care packages that we get, uh, and then donations are for charities. And then we come down to our necessities. So we're going to do 60% to our necessities. Uh, T.R. Eggert mentions that you want to do 55%. Now that's based on that's based on you doing you know 10% to your your personal education. So we're not doing 10% to our personal education. So we put five of that into the necessities, and we put the other five into ultimately paying ourselves first. Okay. So then here are our necessities. You guys have kind of seen these: basically taxes, the mortgage, home maintenance, groceries, personal care, household items, Ricky's cell phone, my cell phone and the internet is paid for out of my self-employment. We have electricity, water, sewer, trash. Now you see here we have a truck payment. Uh, gas, we decided just to combine these all back together. So this is gas for the truck, the car, and the motorcycle. Insurance, this is for all of them combined. The truck, the car, the motorcycle. Maintenance, again, this is for all three vehicles. We have registration slash driving class. I got a speeding ticket after coming home from our cruise vacation, so I have to I had to take a driving class online, so you'll see how much I had to pay for that. And that way I have no points put on my license. It's been over 10 years since I've got a speeding ticket, so you know it is what it is. Uh, my girls, these are their commission jobs. I have a video on how we pay our kids for working chores around the house. If you want to check that out, you can. And then health insurance. We currently have uh, free insurance through the state and that will end at the end of the year so what uh, we will be doing is we will be signing up for insurance through Ricky's work when open enrollment comes so next year we will have the cost the added cost of health insurance uh, and then we have here now we have our debt payoff so what we've done we have our discover credit card this we pay off in full every month so it's really not debt the reason we still use it is because we earn some cash back so we're trying to do that plus it's been helping it really helped to have Ricky's credit score when we went to get the truck his credit score was 781 so that was awesome uh, and then we have here truck loan payoff so to pay off the loan faster so this would be in addition to the regular payment and then we have the extra mortgage the principal on the mortgage you know to, to help pay off that mortgage faster later on as well so again we're doing 12 and a half percent we're going to attempt to do 12 and a half percent extra towards the truck. So this is how basically we're not following Dave Ramsey's uh, baby steps anymore. We are still following his zero based budget. But we're not following the baby steps anymore. Uh, basically, you know, we feel we've been managing our money in a very responsible way. And so now we're basically going to be investing, saving, paying off debt and still having fun all at the same time. Uh, so our last category here is fun and we're doing 10% to fun. So we have eating out, movies and events with the kids, our date night, uh, the YMCA membership, our Netflix, and then we are saving up for a vacation. We have booked our another, another cruise. We're doing a group cruise this time in December of 2020. We have actually decided not to do Alaska yet. We're doing um, uh, Eastern Caribbean, leaving from Florida. Um, so again, that's been, I've been really busy during June as well, getting that set up. I've already got several families booked into the group cruise. So we're starting to plan all that. So if you're interested in joining us on a group cruise, for December 2020, uh, let me know and I can get you more information. Ricky and I are still going to try to do some type of a video. Um, we're going to go camping this weekend for 4th of July, so maybe I, we can do our sit-down video talking about the last cruise and then introducing the group cruise with you. We wanted to do it live, but Ricky's back working a lot of overtime, Monday through Saturday. So let's jump in. I know that was a big introduction. I just wanted to kind of give you guys some updates of what's been going on. Let's go through the actual numbers of what we got going on um, here. So Ricky's base pay, we are looking at 3160 for the month of July. And as you see, I have a lot of things that auto-calculated and auto-populated for me. So I'll go over that here in a little bit as we finish through here. So Ricky's overtime, uh, they've had a lot of overtime. 
like I said, they're doing, not only are they doing 10 hours Monday through Friday, they've had some 10 hours on Saturday, and they worked this last Sunday um, so they could have a four-day weekend for 4th of July. So it's 17, 48, 17, craziness. Myself is looking like 411, 25. Again, this is half of what I would make. You can see my income expense report for my self-employment to see what I spend money on with the where the rest of the money is, but this is half of that. So it's more like 820 something is what I'm, what I'm looking to make. Cash back, we're looking at maybe around $79. I'm just doing my best to um, estimate this. I put on here tax refund interest. So we're actually getting um, $18.22 back from uh, the registration. So it's kind of like tax registration. We're getting back $18.22. Uh, I'm not putting in the interest for the savings accounts because, again, we took so much out um, and spent so much. We spent so much in June. We took so much out. I'm not sure what we'll even earn off of there. So as we come down, you can see here my 12.5% has already calculated for me. So I can see um, we have $677 that we're still going to pay ourselves first. That's still a good chunk of change um, con considering we've never, like in the past, we couldn't even afford, you know, to put any money aside. You can see here 8% of my husband's work and overtime has automatically populated. So we'll be able to invest another $392.65. Again, our minimum goal is 300 a month, so we're well over that, which is nice. So the rest I'm going to put onto the emergency fund. I don't know if I'm going to put anything into Robinhood this month. We were doing uh, maybe $50 a month. There is one stock that I own right now, and I might buy one more share. So if that's the case, let me just plan for it. I'm going to put $70 in here for that one stock. And then you can see here I've added this here to kind of give me my zero-based budget within this section. So $214.43 is what's going to go into the emergency fund. So we're going to gradually build that emergency fund back up. Once the emergency fund is built back up, then this fund here will turn into the girls' savings, my future car, bigger vacations, whatever else we might want to say, um, home improvements because we still want to get the backyard completely finished, all of that type of stuff. For now, we got to redo the emergency fund. Uh, we only have about 950 back in there because we went crazy. You can see giving 5% auto populated for me, so 270. In the past, we've only been giving maybe 2%, so we definitely want to increase this. Uh, and I just divided it in half. So 135 will go for um, future birthdays, holidays, uh, tip money, like I said, if we eat out or get our hair done, uh, and then donations. So we have about five charities that we like to donate. So we're going to start um, on a weekly basis. We're just going to rotate through those charities. So we're going to start making, we're going to start setting that up um, to become a little more automatic for ourselves. And then coming down into our necessities. So 60% right here is three, $3,249.98. Uh, I have kind of calculated, I've kind of calculated some of this ahead of time already. So we might be a little over, so we may not have may not be able to pay as much to the debt but let's just see what we got going in so these automatically populated um for the taxes i put in roughly what percent came out of the last month so this might change a little bit so i did the best i could we'll come back to that and see how how that ends up being the family life insurance though this is always a tw it's 2236 because it's always a five dollars and 59 every paycheck. So you can see that automatically populated out here for me. That's another formula I put in there to help me. Our mortgage is uh, $1,120.98. And you can see here, these have already populated for me. So I've done a percent. So I basically say 40% of that is coming out of the third paycheck. 60% will come out of the last paycheck. 40 will come out of here to equal my 11, uh, 28. Something you're going to see from June as well um, and another viewer had actually gave me the heads up about this was that the escrow account, so basically the escrow account, every month, you know, we're paying the mortgage and the we're paying basically the principal and the interest, but we're also paying property tax and our homeowner's insurance. So those were actually short. It was short by about $275. So what they did is they were either going to add that, they're going to split it up to the next year because we've almost been in here for, we've almost been in the house for a year. They're going to split it up. So our our payment would go up every month. Um, in addition, they're raising the payment 
starting in August as well because they have to make sure that they're not that we're not short again. So um, starting in August, this is actually going to go up to one thousand one hundred forty-one dollars, and then June we went ahead and just paid the two seventy-five that was short. Um, you know, so that's just something that's going to be changing. Home maintenance, we're not going to budget anything for this month. Groceries, uh, we're doing the three thirty-six. I just released a video last week about how we come up with our grocery amount, if you guys want to see that. I have this auto populate, so for the very first paycheck, we're going to make sure we have the entire month worth, worth of groceries. So this allows for us to restock up on anything that we need to, but in general, we try to split it up so we'd spend about $84 a week. But sometimes the first week we spend a little bit more, and then the, the last week we might not spend as much, but that's we'll have that put together. Personal care and household, we're not going to budget anything yet for the month. My husband's cell phone is $35. And again, I have that to auto-populate for me on the second paycheck of the month. Most of these bills that are due, have due dates, um, I want to have them all put in the account. I usually use the second paycheck of the month. So they're all in there ready to go a few weeks before they're due. Some of these are due... Um, the following month. So for instance, water, sewer, trash, this is due on the 10th of the next month. Ricky's truck payment will be due on the 5th of the next month. Um, the cell phone's on the 17th and the electricity is like on the 26th. So electricity, I'm going to budget 165. I don't have the exact amount yet, but that's kind of where I'm looking, where it's looking at. So we'll see. We did get solar put on the roof. I don't know. I may have mentioned that. I don't know. Um, we did get solar put on the roof. And so now we're just waiting for the electric company. They got to set up their meter and then we get to go ahead to turn it on. So I'm hoping, um, you know, in the next couple of weeks, that sucker is going to be turned on. And then our electric bill should only be $81 um, pretty much for the next 20 years. Water, sewer, trash. Now, I had been budgeting $72 and then we had... I think three months in a row it was only like 50 something so what I did was I took the average of the last six months so we're just gonna do sixty two dollars and again I have it auto populate here on the second paycheck for me the truck payment is it's three sixty nine and some change so we're just gonna say three seventy we haven't got the official um, paperwork in the mail yet that says the exact um, amount but I believe that will be due on August 5th we're still waiting for the license plate you know all of that stuff so um, this one we're gonna divide up most likely between here so I've just opened it up so when it comes to that paycheck we can make that decision at that point for gas we're gonna do 160 I have this auto populate for the first week of the first week of the month However, this number I'm pretty sure will go up because this was based off of Ricky driving a motorcycle that gets really good gas mileage. Now he'll be driving a truck that's not going to get so good gas mileage. However, when I'm working for Instacart and DoorDash and stuff, before our personal budget was just paying the gas on the car no matter what I did, I am not going to do that anymore. I am going to pay gas for Instacart and DoorDash through my self-employment so that might offset some of it so we'll kind of just we'll have to see how that's going to play out now um, insurance like I mentioned this is going to be for all three last month the original plan was to pay for the cars insurance because it renewed in June we were going to pay for the whole year so we could get like a 10% discount um, however because we got Ricky's we added Ricky's truck we decided just to go back to month to month um, and so I still need to kind of call them and make sure that we're still getting all of the discounts and everything because it seems a little high but um, it is what it is so it's gonna be 293.97 again this is for three vehicles that I have auto populating for the next one so this you know that's that maintenance we're not gonna budget anything but, um, some wires that melted so he bought the whole new piece and the wires that was on that thing he rode the bike for three more days and it melted again way worse so um, he is going to replace it one more time see if he can get it to stay otherwise I told him he needs to just sell the motorcycle because it's becoming just a huge headache <laughs> at this point I don't know but we'll see so this you know the gas might be higher than anticipated we might end up still purchasing something with the bike until then we're gonna leave it the way it is so the driving class that I had to take is uh, $229.95 my kids commission jobs they get paid their age every week so my oldest is eight my youngest is four my youngest will be five at the end of August so for 
August, part of the time she'll get paid the four dollars a week, and then she'll get paid the other one. So basically, for my daughter, it's thirty-two, um, and then sixteen. Okay, and then health insurance, like I said, we don't have right now. So if you look here within our allowed, our goal of sixty percent, um, we are over by a hundred and fifty-nine dollars. So ideally, that would not be, you know. That would not be ideal, right? We wouldn't want to do that. However, like I mentioned, um, I am paying for a driving class that I is not going to be a normal monthly occurrence. So we wouldn't, we'd actually be in a fine situation. So you can see here, twelve and a half percent again is auto calculated, six hundred and seventy-seven. This is what would be ideally all going to the truck to pay off the truck soon like sooner than later, um, but we'll come back to that number here because we're actually going to go down to our fund category first. So I have 10% is auto calculated for me, so $541 is our fund. Now TR Eggert says it's very important to have that 10%, that fund, and to spend it every month so that you can really enjoy all of your hard work, you know, because that way you just you know, you have resentment or, you know, as David Box says, you know, budgets don't really work because it's kind of like a diet. You know, you, you're restraining yourself, you're cutting corners, you're cutting costs, you're doing all of these things, and eventually you fall off the wagon and you binge and you spend, and that's kind of what's happened to Ricky and I a few times. So this is why I'm changing up how we're uh, allocating our money so that that doesn't happen. Um, so what I've done here, I have this auto calculates for me here for eating out. So I mentioned in my how I come up with our grocery budget that 10% of our income is our food budget. So what I've done is 10% um, minus this 336 is what's left. So that's the 205 for our eating out. So our food budget combined is 10% of our income. Okay, movies and events. Um, like I said, we are going camping for Fourth of July. So most likely that. Um, you know, anything we buy for Fourth of July will come out of the eating out budget because mostly that's what we're buying is, you know, food, drinks. Um, we might need to buy a few other supplies, um, but that would mostly just come out of this money here. We'll, we'll see what happens at the end of the month. Our date night, we always budget $100 for date night, so we're going to put that in. Um, and if you see here, this auto-populated, so I have eating out, I have it coming out of the first two paychecks of the month. Date night, um, looks like I might have to have some come out of three paychecks. The YMCA is $60 a month. Netflix is $9.83, I believe. Yep, so that shows me here I have $166.17 left of our fund. So that's going to go into our vacation fund. Now, T. Harv Eggert would say spend it. Spend it all or only hold on to it for three months and then spend it. Uh, but we have that cruise coming up. So this is going to go into a savings account. Uh, and so that way, when that builds up enough and then we can buy our flight tickets and pay our final payment and all of that stuff that will be there so you can see we have zero we have we have this all here so if we look down at the bottom I have five hundred and seventeen dollars and seventy four cents that I need to tell it where to go so that's what's gonna go into the truck loan payoff so we're gonna put that up here so we have five seventeen seventy four so you would see we would have had you know a hundred and fifty nine dollars left but that's making up for what we went over in the necessities account. So either way, we still brought everything down. We've told every dollar where to go. So we have a zero at the bottom, which is ideal. Um, and we're, we're trying to get back in alignment with these actual percents. Uh, so that's looking good. And then again, like I said, I made some changes. So some of this stuff is auto-populating for me. So for the instance, you know, if on the fifth when my husband gets paid, you know, if I say he made his 790 for that, you're going to see, boom, I'm pointing at it like you can see my hands. <laughs> you can see that it's um, a lot of these things are going to auto-populate for me. Um, so you'll have to join me every Friday when we do our, our paycheck to paycheck budgets. The fifth though, we will be camping. So that's going to be, I'll have to show that to you a little bit after Friday and then we'll get back on track on the 12th, the 19th, and the 26th. So there you have it. So those are the changes we've made to the budget. You kind of heard an update of everything that's been going on. Uh, Happy New Year again everybody. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.